Good to have that information. A few announcements that I want to highlight is the Operation In As Much is April 21st. Uh, there is a sign up out front here in the vestibule, so we invite you to uh, take part in that. Next Sunday is our Native American Ministries special offering. Please give as you are led uh, next week. Uh, our Beyond Sunday program this week is our Nicaragua missionaries, or uh, Mitch and, and its crew are back and going to be talking about uh, their trip, so I hope you will be a part of that. That is this coming Wednesday night. Supper is at 6, uh, and then we have our program about 6.30. So please come and be a part of that. If you'd like to have supper, please reserve your space this Tuesday by 2 o'clock. Uh, the end of the month, we have some interesting and wonderful things going on. We're going to have our celebration choir. Our celebration choir is exactly uh, for those for folks who uh, aren't able to make uh, practices on Wednesday night on a regular basis. What we're trying to do is to uh, enhance the musical ability of our whole congregation. Uh, we are so thankful for what the choir does and the way they lead us, our chancel choir. But this celebration choir gives us an opportunity to, to develop our voices in other ways. So if you've ever thought about singing in the choir, uh, even if you're not sure about your talent level, uh, we are welcoming you, uh, Worth Llewellyn, our uh, artist in residence is going to be leading, meeting you right here on the steps for a few short minutes. Uh, you can find out in the bulletin what we're singing today. I think it's in there, but on April 29th, we're going, we want to have our celebration choir to lead us in our worship that morning. Uh, we're glad to have them. Also, just to remind you now, April 29th is a special day. It's Pastor Emeritus Day. And there's only one Pastor Emeritus in this congregation. The Right Reverend Dr. Reginald, Reggie Thaxton. So it's going to be his day. We're going to recognize him. He has been a part of this congregation for 20 years and offering counsel counsel to members, mentorship to clergy, and we want to recognize him on the 29th. So we'll only have one service that day, uh, but, uh, and we'll have covered dish afterwards. So please make plans now to, to get ready for that uh, on April 29th. Game night for our uh, Kick and Kick Junior is tonight. Uh, you'll see the times in the bulletin, as well as our Encounter Youth Group is meeting tonight. Friends. It's been a busy week. It's spring break. It's been a busy week for so many of us, but it's good to be back in God's house today. I invite you to stand and greet one another in the name of the Lord.
with you. Receive the Holy Spirit. He is my Opening prayer is found in the bulletin. Please join me. Breathe in this place, O Lord, by the power of your Holy Spirit to open our minds, unlock our hearts, and enliven our faith so that we may welcome the risen one among us. Amen. Our Psalter this morning is going to be offered by, who's offering it this morning? Charlie? Phyllis? It's on page 850 of your hymnal. How good and pleasant it is when we live together in unity. It is like the precious oil upon the head, running down upon the beard, upon the very barrier, running down on the collar of his robes. It is like the dew of Hermon, which falls on the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord has commanded the blessing, life forevermore.
thank you. You may be seated, and will our children please come forward for our children's message. Jesus would come for them. So they were together in a room and it was locked. And Thomas wasn't there, but you know who did show up? Jesus. Jesus showed up and told them to have peace. To have peace. Well, when the disciples told Thomas what he'd missed out on, do you think he believed them? He didn't. He said, unless I see him, basically see him with my own eyes and I get to touch the place where they nailed his hands, and I can see the, the, the wound in his side, I, I'm not going to believe. So the next Sunday night, they were gathered in the room, and it was locked. And Thomas was there this time, and guess what happened? Jesus appeared again. Jesus joined them again. And he told Thomas, he said, look at my hands. Place your hands in my hands. And do you know what? Do you think Thomas believed then? He did, because he could see it. Now, one of the things that Jesus says is, basically, thank goodness for those who believe without seeing. And those who have seen and believe, we give thanks. But even though we have not walked this earth during the time that Jesus walked this earth as a human, we believe that Jesus is the Son of God and that Jesus died so that Jesus rose again. And what a glorious day it's going to be when we get to meet Jesus face to face. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for Jesus. Help us to share your love with those who believe and those who do not yet believe. We love you. Amen.
Our scripture reading this morning comes from the Gospel of John, the 20th chapter, beginning with the 19th verse. We bring the living word, the gospel of Christ, to the center of the people as a reminder that Christ is the living word. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked, they were locked for fear of the Jews. And Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. And Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We've seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, I and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house with Thomas. Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt but believe. And Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing, you may have life in his name. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you. You may be seated. Let us pray. God of all who doubt and all who believe, by the gift of your Spirit, enable us to hear with our ears, to see with our eyes, and to touch with our hands your word of life. Jesus Christ, our Lord and our God. Amen. It is Easter evening in our scripture reading for today. The same day that Mary had gone to the empty tomb and discovered that Jesus was there in the garden. It's the same day that 
had followed the previous days where the disciples had had their breath knocked out of them by the events of the previous days of, of the arrest, the death, and now hearing from Mary the words of hope that he has been resurrected. But they had locked themselves away in the upper room. And as, as Angela read, Jesus appears to them and shows them his scars. Now, scars are important. They tell us a lot about who we are. You've got some scars. Somewhere on your body, you've got some scars. There are scars from where you did heroic things and where you did some pretty stupid things too. We can learn from our scars. It is in the showing of the scars that the disciples knew who Jesus was. They recognized him. And maybe that, that ought to be enough to see his hands and his side. It is, after all, what Thomas said he needed to see. But in the middle of that recognition, as Jesus stood in that room, that locked room with them, he does something that is curious and unexpected. He breathes on the disciples. He breathes on them. Now, these days, we are wary of anybody that deliberately breathes on us. We are afraid of what we might catch. We live in a world worried about the flu or some kind of viral infection. But here's the thing, if we ever stopped breathing, if we ever stopped taking in that life-giving air, we would beg for life, the breath of life, from even a stranger. Maybe that's why Jesus is breathing on the disciples here. Jesus came to them not as a ghost or an animated corpse, but as the living, breathing Messiah. Earlier in the dark of that morning, in the silent stillness of death, in Joseph of Arimathea's borrowed tomb, Jesus shattered that frozen darkness with the sound of air filling his lungs again after a pause of three days. Can you imagine the silence? And all of a sudden, he breathed. And later in that day, as evening approached, he, come, he came to his disciples. Now they weren't in a tomb of a heavy, with a heavy stone rolled across the entrance, but for all practical purposes, they might as well have been. Their lives and their ministry were in a state of suspended animation in that stuffy upper room. They hid not only from their enemies, but from the fullness of life. The air had been knocked out of their spirits by fear and failure, sorrow and angst. But like a breath of fresh air, Jesus came into that upper room. Not just sharing with them the scars of the past, but the breath of hope to energize their work in his name. Jesus breathed on them. He gave them new life, the new life that he had experienced before dawn had streaked across the sky. Easter is not just about the resurrected Jesus. Easter is about the new life we are given through the breath of God, the breath of resurrection 
resuscitates our lives. We are given breath for the living of life beyond the tomb of our despair, outside the stale air and confining walls of the fortress of fear that we make for ourselves. Oh yes, our scars tell us where we have been. But the breath of God frees us and equips us to where we will go. On this Sunday after Easter, maybe it's time for the great physician to listen to our spiritual respiration and offer us the breath of God. And there is no doubt that we need the breath of God, the breath of Christ. Because you know what? Some of us are holding our breath in fear. Fear of what's around us, fear of who's around us. Afraid of what lies ahead of us, whether we have the strength to withstand it. And so we are holding our breath. We are filling our lungs and holding our breath with the sweet, nostalgic air of what used to be. How long can you hold your breath? How long will we hold our breath fearing that we will die in the rarefied air of the new? Some of us need the resuscitation of the resurrected Christ because we've had the wind knocked out of us by tragedy or trauma. We have experienced the loss of a job, the death of a loved one. We've endured broken relationships. We have lost our treasures in fire. We have seen problems around us. We have even some of us have even suffered life-threatening illnesses that should have killed us. We've endured a shock to our well-being. And with all of that shock, we've forgotten how to breathe in that moment. We've had forgotten how to breathe in that aftermath. And there's a part of us that doubts if we will ever breathe ever live normally again. In the hidden places of our hearts, where the breath of eternal life is barely sustaining us, the question becomes, what is it that we need to release, to exhale? It is interesting that Jesus offers a word about the release of sin about forgiveness after breathing on the disciples. Anger, guilt, revenge, betrayal, hate. These things can keep our souls from receiving fully the breath of resurrection just as surely as pneumonia can restrict the capacity of our lungs to receive life-giving oxygen. Hate keeps the body of Christ from breathing fully. How long, how long will we hold on to those things? Where do we need to forgive others? Where do we need to forgive ourselves and release the hurt that inflicts harm on us? We need to exhale and breathe out and release our shame and guilt before eternal God. But as much as we need to exhale, we also need to be cognizant, to be aware of what we need to inhale of the breath of God? Where is there lack and lifelessness in your spirit these days? 
Where do you need to be equipped to do the work of the kingdom of God? Where do you need to be equipped to be the child of God? Where do you need courage? Where do you need assurance? Where do you need the boldness to believe and the fresh air of trust? Breathing in and breathing out. In order for us to receive the breath of God, we have to let go of some things and receive that breath of God. And Jesus is not just breathing on the disciples of long ago. Jesus' spirit is in this place for all of us to share to love. So much of what we do on Easter Sunday is good and right. I mean, that service we had last week was great. We came into this place and we sang and we prayed and we proclaimed the risen Savior who's in the world today. We sang up from the grave, He arose. It's, it's a beautiful time to celebrate Christ's victory over death. We leave the church on Easter, Easter Sunday, claiming the empty tomb with flowers and family. But Easter's not just one day. Any more than breathing is one thing, one breath of, into our lungs. The good news of Easter is that Christ's first breath was not his only breath. It was not a solo victory for him alone. Easter is also about how Christ breathes on us. And by his breath frees us from the entanglements of sin, frees us from the choking reality of despair and from the bitterness of death. Easter is not just about the resurrected Jesus, but it's about the new life we are given. The breath of resurrection resuscitates our lives. We are given breath for the living of life beyond the tombs of our despair, outside the confining walls and stale air of the fortresses of fear that we make for ourselves. Oh yes, the scars of our past tell us where we have been. But the breath of God frees us and equips us to go where we are called to go. Easter frees us with the life-giving breath of the Spirit. May our prayer this day echo the words of Edwin Hatch. Breathe on me, breath of God. Fill me with life anew, that I may love what thou dost love and do what thou wouldst do. Breathe on me, breath of God, until my heart is pure, until with thee I will one will to do and to endure. Breathe on me, breath of God, till I am wholly thine, till all this earthly part of me glows with thy fire divine. Breathe on me, breath of God, so shall I never die, but live with thee the perfect life of thine eternity. The breath of Christ comes this day. Breathe on us 
O breath of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite you now to stand and join me in the affirmation of faith. It's the traditional version of our Apostles' Creed. It is found on page 881 of your hymnal. I believe in God the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. On the third day he arose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. This morning as we go to God in prayer, there are those in our prayer, uh, prayer list in our bulletins that we ask you to continue to remember in prayer. We also ask that you especially keep uh, Miss Janet Agu and her family in your prayers during this time of transition and pray God's peace upon all of them. Continue to remember Julie Griffin and Laura Onsrud, um, Larry Curvin's sisters, as both of them are recovering after surgeries and are on the way to healing and recovery. Keith, we continue to remember you and Anne in our prayers, and as we are able to help, please let us know. And finally, there are those who are returning from spring break travels and uh, adventures, and so we are asking God's traveling mercies upon all those still traveling, and we give God thanks for those who have already returned. Let us go to God in prayer. Almighty and patient God, you wait for us to understand. You wait for us to remove the blinders of fear, prejudice, unbelief, and confusion. We like to think that we can fool you with our courageous and pretentious phrases of faith. And so when we hear the story of Doubting Thomas, we think of him as a fool and cannot even imagine having ever doubted. And then in our arrogance, we parade around believing we are somehow better than the one who doubted so many years ago. But you know us fully. You know that we all have our moments of doubt and fear. We wonder where you are at times. And we want to know that everything is going to turn out for the best. At times we find ourselves living in fear, and in that fear, we find ourselves unable to face our own doubts. We confess that we far too often want proof for everything. We want proof that someone loves us. We want proof that we can trust in others. We want proof that everything in life is going to turn out all right. It's easy for us to point our finger at Thomas, who was honest about his fears. He had seen so much hope and healing, but those hopes seemed defeated when Jesus died. And yet Jesus said to him, just as he says to us, Peace, be still. Do not doubt, believe. Lord, forgive our unbelief. Help us to understand your forgiving grace. Help us to know that you understand our weakness and confusion and that your love extends to us in spite of of our weakness. Strengthen our faith and our commitment to you. 
You've offered to us the greatest miracle of all time, the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ. And last Sunday, as we sang and celebrated, we praised you. And yet a week has passed, and many, many of us have slid back into our old ways of recognizing your presence and love. So shake us up, Lord. Shake us up and cause us to look with new eyes on our Savior. Our Savior who came that we might have life and have life abundantly, serving all who are in need. Forgive the many times we think and act in ways which are hurtful or mean. Heal our wounds. Bind up our spirits in the cords of your compassion. Help us to fully place our trust in you with our whole hearts and minds and spirits and souls. Forgive our stubbornness and our complacency. Reach out to us so that we may reach out with healing love to others. Be with those who are in need of your perfect healing and provision, especially Janet, Julie, Laura, Keith and Anne, and all those listed in the bulletin. As we have offered prayers for these near and dear to us, and as we have placed our fears and doubts before you, we pray that you would help us to be people who truly believe where we have not seen. Give us faith to believe in all you have said and done. We love you, God. And we ask all of these things in the blessed name of Jesus. Amen. Remember the first believers who shared one heart and soul, held their possessions in common and distributed them to all in need. In the same spirit, let us present our offerings at the feet of the risen Lord. Will our ushers please come forward with the dedication of our tithes and all.
Let us pray. Holy God, we give you thanks and praise for light and life and love, and above all, the presence of the living, breathing Lord among us. By your Spirit who breathes within us, strengthen our faith, use our gifts, and work in our lives to bear witness to the resurrection of Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Be a sign of Christ's life, so that others may come to believe that the Lord is risen indeed. This is the blessing of the Lord, life forevermore. Alleluia. Alleluia.